Konstantin Karakov is considered to be among a handful of the premier physicists in Russia, a country that reveres its scientists. I considered it a genuine honor to have an hour of his time so that he could bridge our understanding of the unseen world of energy with scientific principles. As a professor of physics, Konstantin holds 12 patents on biophysics inventions, including that of his renowned bioelectrography device, which captures living energy fields around people, plants, and water, all living systems. This device has allowed us to peek into the essence of the life force itself, including our food supply, the water we drink, and the energy that occurs when two or more gather. The word energy is now coming to the forefront. You can even hear it on the evening news, usually with some sort of derogatory statement following it because it's considered new age. However, it's anything but. It's the building block of everything. And you have done remarkable work in measuring the energy output so that we can really start making a crossover from the world of science into the world of energy, energy healing, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Can we start with some of the very common elements of life around us, our air, our water, our food sources? And I know you say Americans have horrible food, and you're <laughs> absolutely right. So begin there or wherever you like with this. Okay, so um, you're absolutely right that now the word, of, uh, the word energy is very, very popular. But to use any word, first of all, we need to get definition. What do we mean by that? Because in a lot of metaphysical background environment, they use this word without any meaning and without understanding. So when they use energy healing, sorry, what do you mean by that? So first of all, we need to make very clear definition. And I'm a physicist with a background in quantum physics. I've spent many years in Soviet Union in this type of research. So for me, it is absolutely acceptable to take normal physical definition of the word energy. And we have many different types of energy. We have uh, energy mechanical, we have chemical, we have uh, physical energy, we have potential energy, kinetic energy, and in particular in biology, in our research, we use energy that we define as energy of electrons. Of electrons, yes. So we can measure in principle and exactly define the energy of electrons and typically it's measured in electron volts. And then we can tell that we have electrons in background state, mm -hmm. in organic molecules, mm -hmm. and we have excited electrons that have extra energy. And this energy may be accepted by light, because when we accept light, mostly sunlight, we increase the energy of our body. It means that we increase the energy of particular specific electrons. Mm -hmm. This uh, same way we can increase this energy by electromagnetic impulses, by different fields. And these electrons may be transformed from one part of the body to another part of the body. So when we tell about energy, energy circulation, energy movement, energy mediums, we mean that we define this energy as electron transfer along protein complexes in organic tissues and in particular in connective tissues. Mm -hmm. So in Russia we have a very strong line of biophysics and it was demonstrated and proven in biophysics that electron transfer in uh, complex organic molecules can come due to tunnel effect. Say that again? The tunnel effect. Okay. So it's jumping of yes. electrons from one group of molecules to another group of molecules. Because it was a big of question how it's possible. And of course uh, we have a lot of uh, electron transfer due to electrolysis. Because in our connective tissues we have always some water molecules. Mm -hmm. And this water molecules allows to organize this electron transfer. Mm -hmm. And this is, from our point of view, it's the basis of all this energy transfer, energy work. Mm 
Which is what the tr energy work of energy healers, Reiki, and so forth. No, no, no. Okay, no? let's not mix together. Everything. Okay, so <laughs> I was, that's what I was asking. When we talk about the energy healers, is, are they actually affecting these exact, in, these exact um, portions of the, you say, through the water, through the connected tissue, and so forth? Is that what uh, they're... Yes, they do yes. this through the water, yes. from our point of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we tell that uh, the person is full of energy, yes. or it's lack of energy, it means that there are electrons to, uh, that are transported to mitochondria, and then they are used to produce ATF, uh, ADF, to really get energy to muscles and to different organs and systems. Mm -hmm. So we uh, are based on normal uh, biophysical concepts of energy stimulation in the body, and this concept is underlined by electron transfer. Mm -hmm. So, from this point of view, then it's understandable if we have some device or human influence or the influence of some particular food or water. This is designed only to provide this, those electrons to different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. And our brain, our mental concentration would allow us to redistribute those electrons mm -hmm. from one part of the body to another part of the body. And in Oriental uh, practice, it is known as energy movement mm -hmm. along uh, chakras, along meridians, along Kundalini. And it's really effective because it's measurable. Right. We can measure the output of photons or electrons in different parts of the body. We can measure temperature in different parts of the body. And this allows us to see this transfer of energy. And they have actually been, even the images of this have been captured using radioactive isotopes along meridians, acupuncture yes. meridians by yes. Jean-Claude Duras years ago. So we can see that there is a movement of something beyond what is uh, clinically definable. <laughs> no, but it is clinically definable. But the problem is that no one was able to define meridians. Because Meridians, they, exactly. Because they don't exist. Yeah. We don't need uh, some uh, nosological passes mm -hmm. because it's transfer of electrons, mm -hmm. transfer of energy due to this electron transfer yeah. through the connective tissues, yeah. through the bone marrows. So it may be done in any part. And there are, uh, seems to be some specific areas where it is more uh, likely to have this transfer. But it's a ben it depends on condition. Mm -hmm. Any uh, doctor, acupuncture doctor knows that some points may be active, some may be absolutely slow. Mm -hmm. Some uh, give uh, weak resistance, some give very low resistance. Mm -hmm. And it totally depends on condition of a person mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, time cycle of a person. Right. Because it changes with time, it has its own cycles. And the human body, having uh, the human being having its own cycles, we breathe, we sleep, we eat, uh, we drink water, and basically we're living in a world, certainly in the Western world, um, in the United States to a very good extent, that's denuded of any kind of really vital energy source, starting with our food, the vitality. And you've actually taken it upon yourself, you've done a tremendous amount of travel, to be able to measure the uh, output the electro, I guess it's the electron mm -hmm, output mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. all of these substances. And what have you found in the modern, the way in which we're living in the modern world? Uh, we are measuring the output of electrons and photons stimulated by electromagnetic field. So it is quantum process. That's why we can measure it at any subject. Would it be living being? Would it be water, uh, some cosmetic product, leaf, plant, or stone? And the only difference is that uh, for human being it is some uh, changeable process. It is repeatable, but it's quite stable. Mm -hmm. But it has some uh, line of variation. Right. We have much stronger energy in daytime, then it comes down, then again it increases, then it comes down again. Mm -hmm. So we have a cycle. We have a day cycle, we have a month cycle, we have a cycle during the year, and we have the main, in our life, 11 years cycle. Mm -hmm. So when we are measuring food, again, we are measuring this output of electrons and photons. And we have a database of uh, situations when we are measuring good food, organically grown, conventionally grown, and chemically grown. And of course, it's a tremendous difference. And this difference 
has an impact on our overall health, the quality of our lives, our energy levels. Yes, it has a very clear effect on our health state. And it was a study done by different groups using different instrumentation, including ours, that demonstrated that uh, people who drink good water, and by good water we mean, first of all, natural water, na water from natural springs, water that have a low level of contaminations, mm -hmm. that have appropriate level of different minerals and substances. Uh, people having good food, mm -hmm. again natural food, they have much higher health quality compared with people who use conventional uh, food or just artificial water. So when you come to America and you, ha you do these kinds of events where you have to be in city a city for a few days at a time, what do you notice the primary difference between food from your garden in mm -hmm. Russia compared to here? Not only my garden. We, in Russia we have very good food and very good tradition of food. And people really care preparing food. In the United States it's a fantastic country, it's a great country. And this country was great in developing different technologies. So it was first technology in um, car making, then technology in um, electronics and technology in uh, aviations. So every technology was designed to the best and the highest level. Mm -hmm. Same was done in food production. So it was designed as technology. And it was huge factories, and it is huge factories. They uh, are producing meat, chicken, uh, vegetables, fruits. So it designed like factories with very high effectiveness. And it was an interesting idea, but then it was found that this idea doesn't work for people. No. Because, first of all, in this production, it's necessary to use a lot of chemicals. Because to keep, for example, a thousand of uh, chicken together in one little place, relatively little, you need to use antibiotics, you need uh, to use a lot of uh, different chemicals, medications, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, drugs to let them grow. Mm -hmm. so, hormones. Uh, hormones, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then it all comes to people. And it all is kept in people's body. I think this is the one thing that is just becoming better understood now, which is the passed on effect of these antibiotics and also the hormones are changing yeah. the maturation rate Absolutely. of the people in this country. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. It's been bumped up, what, a year and a half, two years, the rate of maturity because of these effects, right? Aside from the fact that 25% of all antibiotics don't even work anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, sure. Sure. not good. Absolutely, it's, it's a very bad situation because we need antibiotics in our life. We need it. And it was a fantastic achievement of humankind to develop antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But when they are used on every step, of course uh, they lose their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot more and more microcultures that are resistant to antibiotics. Right. So they need to develop more and more strong antibiotics. Right. And of course any antibiotic has tremendous uh, side effects. They tremendously destroy all uh, microflora in our stomach, in our colons and people have to restore it later on.